guys. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the next step of the process. Now that our breadboard is set up, let's actually create something with it. Let's create a little push button circuit so I can use a push button to turn on an LED. A couple of things you need to know. You need to know how to get the push button, the LED, in there. And you also need to understand that anytime we use an LED with the power source here, we need to protect the LED by putting a resistor in with it. The resistor limits the current. We just talked about that the other day. The resistance lowers the current going to the LED, which causes it, it's like the slower leak of electricity, or the slower leak of electrical energy into the LED, which means we're not going to harm it. In other words, if you plug an LED directly into a power supply, like a 9-volt power supply, you're probably going to bust the LED, to be perfectly honest. So that's what we're going to talk about here. That's what I'm going to work on in this video. I'm going to add a component. We're going to go into here and type in LED and here we go LED there's only one option here we can change the color later on I'll show you how to do that the LED does have two legs to it one of those legs is a positive leg and one of those is a negative leg so the positive leg is called the anode the negative leg is called the cathode okay and we need to make sure that we put it in such a way that it goes from positive to negative because this is a light emitting diode that's what LED stands for light emitting diode and diode is a fancy uh, term for a piece of electrical equipment that uh, electricity can only flow one way through it. That's basically what it means. So we can change the color if we want to. Let's make it green. Why not? And we can come over here and we're just dropping in our circuit anywhere. Notice the orientation. I want it to be like this because if I hit the R button and I turn it this way and I plug it in, don't forget that underneath the board, those, wire, those holes are already connected by an invisible wire, by an invisible metal strip. And so what you're doing then is you're basically short circuiting. The electricity would come in through one end, come in through the positive end, and instead of going up and through the light, it would just go underneath that invisible wire to the other leg. So this light emitting diode with the LED would not work at all. So we're going to go ahead and take it, leave it like this. Next, I need a resistor in place to protect it. So I'm going to add another component. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type in the word resistor. And they look like this. This is a little carbon film resistor is what it's called. We can change the value of it here later on. I am going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to set it up so perhaps I go in, um, let's, go, let's go this way here. I'm going to connect it to the negative end of the LED. So I know if you can't see it right now, don't forget that it's actually behind the LED. What's going on is this. Electricity will come in through the positive end. It'll go through the light. It'll come out the negative end. It'll travel underneath the invisible wire here to the resistor, at which point it will jump across and we'll end up here. So this will be the final destination of our circuit. What we have to do at this point in time is we need to make sure that this connects back to ground, back to the black wire. And since we set up this jumper wire to go all the way across, we can easily just go this dot up to the black dot. Let's color it with the black wire to signify that it's zero volts, it's grounded. And what's going to happen now, let's trace the circuit. Electricity is going to come in, go through the LED. It's going to go underneath the invisible wire all the way to this leg of the, of the resistor. It's going to travel through the resistor. It's going to travel underneath this invisible wire to get to the black wire. It's going to travel here, all the way underneath, over to this black wire, all the way over to here, and all the way back to the power supply. So we've got everything in here except how are we going to get power from this red line over to the positive end of the LED. We're going to use a push button switch here to actually do that. So I'm going to add a component. I'm just going to type in the word push. There it is. Here's our push button switch. Now, notice the direction of legs, how they're up and down right now, as opposed to left or right. We want them to be up and down. And what we're going to do is we're going to come bridge the gap be careful about this. We're going to bridge the gap here in the middle of the breadboard and we're going to make sure that the top left component of the push button is right there lined up so that the electricity will come out of this and go into the LED. Now the way the push button switch works is this. Right now if I were to connect this to power this leg automatically transfers power across the push button to here at all point in time. So regardless of whether you're pushing the button or not if I connect a wire here electricity will pass through. If I want to actually use the switch like a switch, what I'll do is this. I'm going to take a wire. I'm going to connect from power over to this leg. I'm going to go ahead and color it red. 
So what happens is this. Power comes out, jumps across the red wire here, travels underneath and goes to the diagonal leg. So notice it's a diagonal relationship. And what happens is this, is when you push down, it puts a little metal connector down. It pushes a metal connector in place. It actually allows the electricity to travel through here, through the connector, out to the diagonal. So no connection, and then you push on it, and then there is a connection. So now, let's try it and see what happens. Press play. I have a 9-volt battery here. Oh, I, sorry. We need to stop. we got to do one other thing. This resistor is too big. If I click on it, click on it, it comes up with a resistance value, which is 1 kilo ohm. Kilo means thousands. That's 1,000 ohms. That's way too big. We're going to change this to about 330 ohms. That's going to give us a better value. Too high of a resistance, and the LED wouldn't even turn on. It would just kill the electrical circuit, basically. No current. So I'm going to hit start simulation again. I'm going to come over here. We have 9 volts. No electricity flowing right now because it's a broken circuit. Zero amps. No current. But now when I push the push button, the light turns on. 21 milliamps of current going through it. We do get this little message here. I'm kind of curious what that says. Okay. Now I want this to stay on long enough for me to see it. So I think I hold down control maybe. Nope. That's not it. I'm going to hold down shift and click on it. And it stays down long enough that I can come over here. Okay, the current through the LED is 21 milliamps, while the recommended maximum is 20 milliamps. So the usable lifetime of the LED may be reduced. Well, hey, you know what? This is just a simulation, so we don't really care. If you did want to go through, what we probably have to do is we need to knock this resistor up a little bit to decrease the current. Bigger resistance, smaller current. Anyway, you have a working switch. That's pretty darn cool. You've got a working LED circuit. That is the first part of activity 1.2.3. Now, it's your turn to go build this.